The human body is constantly at war. Therefore, just like a castle, it has an incredibly intricate defense system to fight against foreign enemies, such as bacteria. Among this defense system, there is the second line of defense, which occurs after the enemies penetrate the first line of defense. It involves several processes, which include the phagocytes at work, and they non-specifically target any foreign enemies that come in the way. As the enemies break through the first line of defense, their entry will stimulate the release of chemicals, including histamines. Histamine triggers three distinct and powerful functions, known as the inflammation response. One, it will increase the diameter of the blood vessels, as we want more phagocytes at the site of infection to fight the enemies. The increase of space allows phagocytes to travel faster through the bloodstream, therefore to reach the bacteria quicker. Two, as the histamine is released, the permeability of the blood vessels increase, allowing the phagocytes to pass through them into the tissues easier. Three, it increases the temperature of the body, which destroys the enzyme activity of the bacteria, thus inhibiting them from replicating. With the help of these above, phagocytes reach the bacteria faster, and the destruction becomes easier. The phagocytes fight and kill the bacteria in the process phagocytosis. First, the phagocytes detect and spot the bacteria. They will eat anything that has been detected as an enemy. Then they change its shape and engulfs the bacteria. Inside the phagocyte, the bacteria are surrounded by a vesicle called phagosome, and other vesicles containing lysosomes will fuse with the phagosome and dump dangerous chemicals to break the bacteria apart. After the bacteria is destroyed, the antigen will be displayed on the macrophages MHC marker, and the bacteria's debris will then be released by the phagocytes. Reminder. Unfortunately, in the face of a persistent enemy, our phagocytes are not always successful, as bacteria can sometimes get away or even escape before it is completely destroyed. Now, many debris, dead white blood cells, and maybe some bacteria will be contained in a fluid around cells and tissues. So the lymph system or the draining system of the castle comes in place to clean this very messy space and recycle the fluid. This fluid will be drained into the lymph vessels. And as these substances travel across the lymph vessels, they will pass through lymph nodes and encounter phagocytes. Remaining bacteria will then be killed by these phagocytes, and any debris will be filtered out. Then the clean fluid will travel towards the heart to be pumped around the body again. In addition, in case things go wrong, there is a backup strategy known as cell death. When phagocytes cannot destroy the bacteria and is being overpowered. Cells are ready to sacrifice. The cells surrounding the bacteria would kill themselves and seal off the infected area to prevent the bacteria from spreading. A cyst would then be formed. The bacteria, cut off from food supplies, will eventually die. Later, the debris of dead cells and bacteria will be cleaned by the phagocytes through phagocytosis. But this is the worst-case scenario in case inflammation does not work. Lastly, phagocytes are not the only cells at work in the second line of defense. They have a group of helpers called plasma proteins who assist throughout all of these processes. They can help in various different ways. One, they can signal the phagocytes to the site of infection through chemical signaling. Two, they can puncture holes in the membrane of the bacteria, causing the cell content to leak out and the bacteria to die. Three. They can cluster the bacteria together, so it would be easier for phagocytes to destroy.